Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody this morning. Amen. We're getting a little feedback here and there. We're going to get it ironed out. Amen. God bless you. Good, good to see your smiling faces this morning. Amen. It's a special day for us today. A lot of stuff's been going on at church. Brother B.R. and Thelma and, and uh, the, uh, his young'uns and all of other folks have been working uh, diligently around here to prepare for our Christmas dinner this evening at 5 o'clock. So please be prepared and bring plenty of food because I know there are going to be some hungry folks in here. Amen. And uh, so I'm excited about that. We've got uh, a lot of chairs set up over there, and uh, we've got uh, most people signed up is going to fill them. Amen. Yeah, i tell you right now, when you start eating, people start showing up, don't they? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. You know, I'm going to preach a little on that this morning. You know, food is what calls uh, the fall of man. Think about it. But if you do it in the right way and you pray about it, praise God, and God blesses that food. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to have a good time in the Lord today and uh, got a few announcements to make. We're going to have a baptism here January the 20th on uh, the PM service. So if you got somebody that needs to be baptized in water, I'll certainly dunk them three times and bring them back up. Amen. So I want you to be thinking about it. If you want to be baptized, please see uh, uh, Brother D. Wayne or Lindsay and uh, sign up with them and they will prepare you and let you know what you need to do. Hey, boy, how you doing? God bless you. And uh, uh, they will prepare you and, and get you ready uh, for uh, what we'll do on uh, January the 20th, that p.m. service. Now, uh, also on that p.m. service, I mean, that a.m. service, uh, we'll be ministering to the Word of God. And our folks that's going on a missionary trip will be leaving that day to go to the airport in Charlotte. And uh, they'll be flying out to go do missionary work for a week to two weeks. So we're excited about that. So you'll be in much prayer about that because uh, a lot of things is going to happen uh, to those folks on that island. God's going to heal, set free, and deliver those folks. Amen. Praise God. God is uh, uh, taking a team over there to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, uh, to those folks. So we're excited about that. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we got a couple of uh, special singings going on this uh, morning also. <coughs> and uh, January, there'll be no youth services on Wednesday night. Remember that? Uh, they'll be uh, coming over here and everything. It's going to be temporarily. It will change again uh, when the timing's right on that. Praise God. And also, I want you to remember, after the preacher gets through preaching today, Sister Jeanette and her mama uh, is going to be giving out uh, uh, fruit baskets and candy. So everybody, the adults and the children, will be able to get one. Amen. So uh, if y'all can beat me in line, that'll be good. But just wanted to tell you that and uh, be ready and be praying about uh, uh, the service Wednesday night and next Sunday morning that God's going to move in a mighty way. Good to see everybody this uh, uh, day and we love you so much and be in much prayer with my wife and my uh, mother-in-law. Uh, uh, my, uh, my wife lost her sister last night. She passed away about 11, 11, 15 last night. So be in much prayer there. Good to see our brother Tim here this morning too. Praise God. And we love him. He's family. And uh, uh, anybody else I'm missing, praise God. If I do, I love you. Amen. We love you. Amen. Praise God. Brother Richard's going to be ministering and praising worship this morning. Did I forget anything, Jeanette? I would like to mention that uh, Tim and Angie's daughter is getting ready to leave for the mission field. Oh, yes, please. That's why they're not here today. They had to, uh, I think it was um, Chick-fil-A is having a big surprise party, going away party for her for the mission field. And uh, so that's why Angie couldn't make it today. Amen. Praise God. That's an awesome calling right there, folks. I tell you right now, it's easy for us folks back home uh, to be able to give finances and stuff to help that. And you on the Internet can help with donations, too, if you'll look in the right-hand corner of our website. And uh, if you want to help this ministry, which is uh, ministering the gospel of truth, praise God, please uh, do it. we got a missionary group going out of here next month. And we can use all the help we can get. Praise God. And this is an awesome column that's on uh, Brother Tim and Angie's uh, uh, children, I'll tell you right now, uh, going to the missionary field is something else. Uh, just being there. You know, we had a, a brother, uh, Billy Owens, he's been on the missionary field in, in the Philippines about 14 years. And I'm telling you, uh, being there is a lot different than just uh, helping somebody go. Helping somebody go, you're going to get blessed for it, though, let me tell you. But if you walk the ground of that missionary field, and you'd be thinking God might want you to go. Amen. Praise God. Sometime God might want you to be a missionary right in our own community. But he did say, go ye into all the world. So he has called certain people to go out into all the world and spread the gospel like he said. Amen. 
And some of you have been called right around the community right here. So you can uh, just do that work. I don't, God, God got me on missionary stuff. That's a powerful thing. Praise God. But uh, let's go uh, to the Lord in prayer and begin this service. And then we're going to have some praise. And I want you to praise God and worship him because that's what we come in here for. Amen. Just to love him. We can't do without him. He is the one to sustain us. Amen. Praise God. And we, I want to pray a special prayer to all of you folks. Agree with me about the folks in Connecticut and Sandy Hill. That was such a tragic thing. You know, the devil's just uh, out about uh, trying to kill and destroy and do all those evil things that the Bible talks about. But praise God for our Lord Jesus Christ who came to give life and give it more abundantly. Praise God. And we're more than conquerors through him. Praise God. But let's, let's, let's just cry out in prayer, in prayer about those folks in Connecticut. You, I, I tried to watch some of it last night got to cry and had to turn it off. And it's just tragic. And it, it's just tragic. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you and we praise you uh, this morning. God, in Jesus' name, we honor you. God, anoint the praise and worship, special singing, anoint the preaching of the word, God, in a mighty way. Anoint the Christmas dinner tonight, God. Uh, we're doing it uh, uh, in focus of Jesus, our Lord uh, Christ, and all those that's helped to uh, prepare and, and do the things for this thing. Lord, just bless them in a special way, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And Lord, we pray right now for my wife and, and, uh, and her mother, God, just this touch him in the loss of their the loved one in the family god in jesus name god we pray that through this god that uh, uh, some of the family members will even be saved after this god in jesus name lord and lord we pray for those folks up in connecticut god up at sandy hill even on the internet i pray that you folks will pray for those people up in uh, connecticut lord and sandy hill god uh, Lord, at that school, God, please touch those ones that lost loved ones. God, those innocent little children, God, uh, that was taken from this this world, God. Uh, uh, Lord, I, I just know thee in heaven. God, be with them, Lord. And those adults that lost their lives, God, be with every family up there, God. Uh, and Lord, touch their heart. Give them strength. Give them encouragement, God. Give them strength uh, to endure this thing of grieving, God, of the lost loved one, the precious ones that you give them to love, God. Oh, God, I just lift the families up to you, God. I pray, God, that our Lord Jesus Christ will turn that community around uh, even in a greater way, uh, Lord. But that tragedy will bring uh, uh, something in that uh, town, Lord, uh, uh, even greater, Lord, that you'll touch those people, God, and you'll be a testimony even then, God. We love you and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Richard. I may come to <laughs> raise and praise your God today. I mean, you got God praising on your mind and on your heart. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says in Psalms that uh, we are to praise Him with, with a many a string instrument, to praise Him with percussions. You might say, well, I don't have no strings like or no percussion. Well, you got vocal cords, don't you? Yeah, if that's what strings, instruments that God created in you. You got hands that can clap, you got feet that can dance. Amen. He's give you everything you need to praise Him with. Hallelujah. He empowered you by His Spirit. Amen.
are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of the servant Moses righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials darkness and famine
Praise God. Somebody praise God in this house. He's worthy today. Amen. Hallelujah. reverence the Lord this morning. Um, we're in the house of God and we're in his presence. And most everybody is in reverence toward God this morning. And I just want you to remember that we are before God and he's watching us and he cares about everything that's concerning us. But also I would just like to ask you this morning and I want, to, I want you to know that we don't expect everybody to stand up because we know that people have health problems and, and uh, we don't ask them to stand up. So don't ever feel like you're being pressured to do that. And just let you know that we love you. And God bless you. And I hope this is the best Christmas that you'll ever have. But I would ask you that you would just not rever um, to reverence God and not be giggling and cutting up while the service is going on, especially while the worship is going on and even when the the praying in any part of the service. So I'd la I would just like to ask you to kind of pay attention to the worship and get involved and, uh, and not be playing around and, uh, and picking on one another. It really, from up here, it just shows that, that God needs to work a little more in our lives and, uh, and to get us to reverence him. So I hope you know that I'm not fussing. I'm just saying that I appreciate all of you that are reverencing him this morning. God bless you. Amen. I believe if we could see him in the beauty of his holiness today, we'd have no problem worshiping him. Amen. We just need to go to that heavenly place, hallelujah, in him. We just need him to open our eyes unto who he is, and who, how holy he is, how pure and righteous and mighty he is today. Amen. It's in him that we trust today, praise God. Hallelujah.
Come on and bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. There's no other name I know. Come on and help us bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. In the name of my Jesus Salvation in the name of my Jesus Salvation in the name of my Jesus There's no other name that I know Come on and it was blessed name of my Jesus Come on and bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Yeah, bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. There's no other name that I know. Well, all healing in the name of my Jesus. Yeah, healing in the name of my Jesus. Yeah, he lives in the name of my Jesus. There's no other name that I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of my Jesus. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. There's no other name that I know Cause he, he's my friend 
Well, cause he picked me up, yes he did Told me to run, he picked me up, yes he did And he told me to run, he picked me up, yes he did Told me to run, cause he, he's my friend That Holy Ghost did Told me to run He gave me the Holy Ghost Told me to run He gave me the Holy Ghost Told me to run He my friend Oh, there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party Cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party Cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party A Holy Ghost party don't stop It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and Well, there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party A Holy Ghost party don't stop There ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party Cause the Holy Ghost party well, there ain't no party like Holy Ghost Party Holy Ghost Party don't stop It goes on and on On and on and on Come on and help us bless that wonderful name Of my Jesus Bless that wonderful name Of my Jesus Bless that wonderful name of my Jesus There's no other name that I know That wonderful name of my Jesus. There is no other name that I know. Know that I know. There's no other name that I know. That I know. Know that I know. There's no other name that I know. He's on the main line, tell him what 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me get unhitched here. I'm going to ask uh, Carrie and Brittany, would they come up please? And while they're coming up, Sister Paula will be ready too here in just a minute, I think. The and reason that um, we forgot last week, or I forgot, that Carrie and um, Brittany were going to sing I Know My Redeemer Lives, and they were going to do it for Brother Gary Griffin and in honor of his birthday. And before, before they start, I, I just want to ask you, has anybody in here had a birthday in Richard. December? Are you going to have one? If you do, just raise your hand right now where you are. Okay? And I know. Okay, praise the Lord. What about anniversaries in December? Who could poop? Okay, well, God bless you. Happy anniversary. And uh, he's not in here, but I do, I do happen to know that uh, Keith Felker has a birthday today, but he's not even in here to hear it. But happy birthday to all of you, and happy anniversary to all of you that have a birthday in December. God bless you. I'm going to ask the ushers would please come up. Amen. Praise the Lord, amen, for praise and worship, glorifying God. He said to praise him and with the string instruments, amen. Praise God. Appreciate our praise group, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask uh, Brother uh, Ronnie Turner, brother. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for each and every person here today, Lord. Lord God, we just ask you to anoint your word this morning, Lord, and use it, Lord God. And Lord God, just use these tithes and offerings to uplift your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise God. They'll be collecting the tithes and offerings. It's an honor to give to God. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask the sisters to come on up here. How 
many know their Redeemer lives this morning? <clears throat> well, I know because he's living in me.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for that. Praise and worship. It's an honor to praise God, isn't it? Amen. Praise God. You know, I appreciate Brother Richard and Steve and Jamie and the choir group for the praise and worship and and the two girls that sang that. I know my Redeemer lives. I test one of my, uh, just blesses me, uh, just knowing that he's alive. Amen. He's alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. And ancient words, God's eternal. Amen. He's always been. That's what's exciting, praise God, about our God that we serve. Hallelujah, praise God. If you've got your Bible and you want to follow with me some, I've got a script, uh, some word that the Lord wants me to minister this morning. And uh, it's about something that we all need to do and we all need to do more of it. It's called prayer. We're going to talk about prayer this morning. We need much prayer in America, don't we? You know, we look at the tragic thing that happened. You know, the Word of God says in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, five seventeen, pray without ceasing. That's just part of it I want to just talk about a little bit starting off here. Pray without ceasing. We as Christians need to continue to pray without ce- uh, ceasing. You as a Christian loving God, you need to pray for your pastor, your senior pastor, your pastor's associate pastor. You need to pray for the administration of the people that's running our nation. You need to pray for the people that's running other nations that God will come up on them and they'll rule and reign and, and, and they will uh, uh, do what they do in a Christ-like manner. Because I tell you right now, if I had a, uh, uh, you know, I got somebody that sold me it's, uh, of, of a Christ-like manner, praise God, I'm okay. Because I know, praise God, that he is the one that does all the judging anyway. Amen, praise God. But we as Christians need to pray and pray and pray. And we don't pray enough. I'm going to tell you, this, 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 this preacher don't pray enough. I'm trying to get on my knees more. You know, Jesus, when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, he got on his knees and he prayed. Amen. He got reverence to God. You know, we as children of God, when you become a child of God, you got to get reverence to God. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you better be reverence to him because he can put you in a place that you wish you would. I'll tell you. You know, I love my daddy. And I love my mother, but my daddy and mother, they wore my fanny out when it was needed. And I'm so glad they did because they loved me. Well, my heavenly father, she's shaking her head over here, yeah. <clears throat> my mother, I'm so proud of her. You know, my heavenly father, though, praise God, he has chastised me before. Have you ever been chastised by the Lord? Anybody been whooped by the Lord? Raise your hand. I've been whooped by him, boy, and I remember and I know it. And I reverence God, but I love God, uh, Ronnie. Uh, because I know he loves me, amen. And I feel special, uh, during, not during the chastisement, Tim, when that's going on, I don't like it. I want to get out of it, don't you? And, but, but when it's going on and when it gets finished, praise God, I know that God has put me in a position to lead me down the way he wants me to go and I want to do what's right for him, amen, praise God. And so I follow him and go in the direction he wants me to go, amen, praise God. I tell you, uh, we got to reverence the Lord, we got to love him, and we got to pray, folks. I can, I tell you, I got to study, and I've been studying this week on prayer, and I whooped out some stuff, you know, the Lord showed me on prayer, and uh, I looked at it, you know, and I said, well, that's, that's pretty good, you know. I'll never forget one time when I went in the prison with Roy and Jeanette, one time I went to live, say, up here, and I'll never forget it, you know, God told me, spoke to me, and said, I want you to preach on Jesus. And I said, boy, that's, you know, I hadn't been preaching long either. I just started preaching a little bit, you know. I said, preaching on Jesus, boy, that'll be easy. That'll be a piece of cake, you know. And so I won't never forget it. I had preached somewhere else, and I'd just begun to preach a little bit, you know, and I'd preached somewhere else, and I had uh, 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 had this message I had strong on my heart, you know, and I, I got there in Live Say, and we went in, and all of a sudden I'm fixing to get up there and preach, and what happened? I, man, I got to reading about Jesus, and man, the whole Bible's about Jesus. There's everything in about Jesus. Uh, and I, I seen all of that, you know, and I said, I got up there and I started to get up there and preach. I said, well, Lord, I, I think I'm going to preach on this. And Jesus said, no, I want you to preach on what I tell you, my son. And I said, yes, sir. I obeyed the Lord. And I preached on Jesus with a fire in that little in that institution, praise God. And I ministered, boy, on the power of Jesus and who he was. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. I preached the gospel, boy. And I'm going to tell you here today, I'm very proud of it. 50% of the congregation was saved because I obeyed God. And the 50% uh, was two people. There was a total of four in there, and I think one of them left. No, no, I take that back. Uh, There was four in there, and two got saved. But I want to tell you who got saved. 
Two Muslims got saved because they were introduced to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I give him the glory. Amen. So I obeyed the Lord. Amen. So I prayed and I prayed and, and I'm doing those things that God wants me to do. And I got to pray more because so many folks in here need prayer. I need prayer. And God put somebody on your heart you need to pray for them. You know? So I, I got to looking in, in God's word and, and looking at, boy, everything's about Jesus, you know. And, and so uh, this week when I got to studying and looking in and, 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 and digging in, man, everything's about prayer too. We're supposed to speak and call out to God for those things that we need down here. Amen. Because when we get there with him, we're not going to need them. Amen. We're going to be with him, praise God. There's things going on, there's turmoil going on in this earth that we live in. But I'm, going to, I'm here to tell you, uh, be of good cheer because God has overcome those things with his son Jesus who came down. By the way, he's deity, he was God, and he dwelt among us upon this earth. The word of God says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and he dwelt here among us, hallelujah. And any... Uh, Religion that denies that is not of our Heavenly Father. Because He is the truth, and we're speaking the truth uh, this morning. That's what we want to uh, look at this morning. You know, God said, we're supposed to pray. When G what did Jesus do? He was our example, wasn't He? We're going to look at some of our examples here in just a minute. God said that we're supposed to pray. Amen? Jesus went in the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't go in there and just hang around, did He? He went in there because he came upon this earth for you and I to die on a cross, praise God, to do and obey his Father. And when he went in the Garden of Gethsemane, he got down on his knees is what the Bible says. He got down on his knees and he began to pray. And he prayed so hard that drops of blood actually come from the pores of his skin. Because there was a war going on in that garden. The devil wanted and all of his demons wanted to kill our Lord. It was going on. But our Lord Jesus, who gave us the example, he was in that garden on his knees and he was crying out to the Father. You know what he said? Lord, let this cup pass from me. Lord, I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want this cup. <coughs> and he prayed. And he prayed some more and he said, but Lord, not my will, but your will. And so he went to the cross for you and I that we can have this freedom this morning, that we can get on our knees and pray to the Father Amen, who hears us. If you've got Jesus in your heart and you pray out to him, if you've got a relationship with him and you look at the promises that he's got, you can hear, he will hear you. Amen. He will hear you. I want to tell you something. I want to just give you a little example this morning. I think this is a good one. I like this one. A guy named Hezekiah. He was King Hezekiah. The angel, the, the prophet came to him and said, listen, get your stuff in order. Because the Lord's going to require your soul this day. And oh, Hezekiah, you know, he was trying to live for the Lord and do the things and everything. And, and, and the prophet told him, get yourself in order. God's going to take you because he was, had a boil on him. He was sick and he was going to die. And the angel told him, get your stuff together. You're going to die. Well, I want to show you how prayer can change things. You know, you say, well, God's already got things planned and ain't going to. Let me tell you, God changes things. And so Hezekiah cried out. He looked to the wall over and he cried out, God, hadn't I done this for you and I've done this and done all of these things? And you know what? Our God had compassion on King Hezekiah. And he told the prophet, said, tell Hezekiah, I'm going to give him 15 more years. So God had sent the prophet down there to tell him that get your stuff in order because I'm going to take you out of here. And oh, Hezekiah, John, he cried out, didn't he? He cried out to a God that heard his voice. And he had compassion on him. And he told the prophet, said, tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. So it changed God's mind, didn't it? In the position that he was in. We see that, don't we? Praise God. So prayer really works. Amen. Does prayer work? Amen. Yes, it does. How many in here have prayed and got a prayer answered? Raise your hand. Oh, that's good evidence. I like that. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I prayed sometimes, I ain't got it answered yet. But I'm still praying, Vernon, because God's going to answer, amen. If I get myself right in the Word of God, and if this is one of His promises, and I'm His child, I am His child, and I keep my relationship and my channels open with Him, I'm going to keep praying, and I'm going to stand. Because I got some folks I prayed for a long time, and they got saved, amen. Amen. We got loved ones that we, I got loved ones that I'm still praying for, me and my mother and folks. Anybody here, we all got loved ones, ain't we? 
We got some folks that ain't there yet, and we keep praying that God will help them, Lord, to come there. I want to tell you, there's turmoil going on in this world. We see what happened up here in Connecticut this week. It's so tragic. It's so tragic. Can you imagine being one of those parents and having to identify your child in a photo? I can't imagine. My heart, I started crying. When I was listening to it, I had to turn the channel. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. But I've been praying for those people. Because, see, prayer is the most important thing. We got to pray for those people and cry out for God to have compassion and help these people in troubled times. We in troubled times, ain't we? We in troubled times. There's some things going on in this world. We got to stay on our knees. I want to tell you another. My wife lost her sister last night at 11.15. She's been working with her for seven months, her and her mother, to try to get her to come to the Lord. Well, she came to the Lord. I give God the praise. But I want to tell you, it was a lot of agony and prayer that went on and the war, the spiritual war that went on there. My wife wouldn't give up. She kept playing Christian tapes and reading the Word and showing her things. And we prayed for her even when she was in. She didn't even know us. We just kept talking to her and reading the Bible and praying. But that don't, don't always happen. These people out there in the world that don't have a sister or a brother or, or a mama and daddy that's praying for them. Most of us here this morning, somebody has prayed for you and the power of God has touched you and drawn you into the sweet Holy Ghost uh, and you're in the kingdom of God this morning on account of that. Now, do you think that maybe we have an uh, 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 obligation to pray for our loved ones and do those things uh, to draw our families in? Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I get up in the morning and try to read my, I'm a morning person. I get up in the morning, I try to read my Bible and pray. I read my Bible and pray and, and study at night sometimes. But I get up in the morning and I'll start praying. And first thing happens, flesh. I mean, it's a battle. The flesh comes up on us and I start crying out and I, uh, I say, God, I love you and I praise you this morning, but you got to fix this. You got to do this. You got to go do this job. And you got to do down there. You got to work on your equipment down there. You got to do this. All of, oh, you got to cook breakfast. You're hungry. All those things start getting in my mind. Amen. But if I keep pressing on and get that time with the Lord, I break through the cardinal man and I go into the spiritual man and the power of God starts working. And you know what happens when I break through the cardinal man? At first I start out, God bless me here and bless this and bless this and help me to do this. And when I break into that spiritual man, I start saying, God bless this person and bless this person and help that person, God, and, and, and help them spiritually and help them financially and help their uh, uh, body and touch them. The power of God comes and the prayers are being received by the Lord. Amen. Because you're in that spiritual realm now. And old selfish flesh and pride gets out of the way and you start praying for what God really wants you to pray for. We're going to look at some of those things up here uh, this morning. Let me get over here and just look a little bit. <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, God has given us a, a uh, example to go by. Amen. And we're going to look at this example this morning. I got a song that the Lord gave me. Uh, uh, I hadn't sang it in a while. Maybe it will come up again, praise God, when the Lord tells me to. But he gave me the song of this a long time ago. And if you got your Bible and you want to look at Matthew uh, uh, 6, 9, 13, it says right here, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. In other words, uh, the disciples were talking to Christ and they said, Listen, said, uh, 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 I, I want you to pray like this. Pray, uh, Amen. After this manner, therefore, our Father, our Father which are in heaven. Now think about that. Our Father which are in heaven. Our Father is what? That's a relationship, isn't it? Wait, hey, something to this prayer right here, y'all. There's a lot in this prayer right here. Amen. Praise God. You know, uh, our Father which are in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, or else is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who uh, 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 come against us. Now look here. Let's, let's just go in here and read just a little bit. Now, uh, I, I, if you got your Bible, you need to mark this in your Bible. You know, sometimes when I start to pray, I, I pray this prayer right off the bat, okay? And then I start praying my other prayers to the Lord the way I should do. But this is a great example right here. Look here. Our Father, that's a relationship, isn't it? Uh, amen. And which are in uh, heaven, which are in heaven, praise God. That's recognizing where he's at, Amen. He's in heaven. Praise God. Our Father. Oh, that's our Lord. Amen. And 
which is in heaven that's recognizing where he's at. Praise God, we see that. And now look here. Hallowed be thy name. Adoration towards him. Praise God. Adoration towards the king. And uh, thy kingdom come. I'm anticipating more of him. Amen. Praise God. We're in his kingdom, but his kingdom's going to come. Amen. He's going to come down from the third heaven. He's going to come down and dwell among us. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. You know, I'm kind of uh, jealous of the people that's, uh, <coughs> they're already up there having a good time. And you know, if we get raptured out, we ain't going to get to hang around up there but seven years. And old Enoch's been up there for 5,000 years, ain't he, Jeanette? Somewhere around there. He's been up there having a good time. You know, I, I look at it, and we got brothers and sisters up there that's just having a good time, Yvonne. They, they's having a good time. We down here, ain't we? But one day, praise God, if he raptures us out of here, we're going to go, go get to be in heaven and be with him for seven years up there. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the tribulation upon this earth like never before is going to come upon this earth. But we as Christians, praise God, will be with the heavenly father and we'll come down with the king of kings and the Lord of Lord to a battle of Armageddon. Armageddon and we will be victorious in that day. And we will be with Christ and we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. It's called the millennium reign upon this earth, praise God. You see what's going to happen? All sin and rebellion is going to be cast away from this earth and gotten rid of on this earth, praise God. And a, and a sinless society is going to come forth. That's the way God planned it in the first place, amen? But he gave a free will to mankind and mankind messed it up. You know, I told you earlier that mankind lost the rule of this earth because of food. <laughs> they eat fruit from the wrong tree. You know, I'm real proud of this tie right here, by the way. I don't wear them much anymore, but I got this from my brother Roy, and it's anointed. And he got it from Brother James Payne, and he was anointed. So it's an honor. Y'all better look out this morning. It's power. I believe it was old... Uh, 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 Peter and some of them anointed cloths and power of God uh, touch people. Amen. So I'm excited about that. Amen. Praise God. Let's look a little bit further. <clears throat> and let's see what God says. Amen. So I'm anticipating uh, the kingdom of God and, and being in that and dwelling in that. Amen. Praise God. We got something to look forward to. Praise God. We got something to tell our brothers and sisters about uh, the power and all uh, uh, the anointing of God and what he's going to do. He has a plan. And by the way, we're part of it. Amen. Oh, yeah, I read the back of the book, and we win. Amen? I'm excited about that, too, praise God. Look here. Now, it said, uh, hallowed be thy name, anticipation, uh, thy kingdom come, and uh, thy will be done. We want his will concentrate. We want it to be done here, don't we? We, we know what's going on in heaven. It's good. We want some of the things going on in heaven to go on down here. Amen? We want his will to be done down here. I tell you right now, my brother uh, taught on it here the other day, I believe, and, and some of them about purpose. We've got purpose. And it, it, it's not all about making money and, and all of those things because God knows, you know, I love the, the scriptures on my hanging on me and Becky's wall. That's my favorite scripture, Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things going to be added to you. So if you seek him, seek him early, you'll find him. Amen. Seek him when you can, though. Praise God. Seek him. I tell you right now, if you put him first in your life, all the other stuff's going to come. He's going Because he knows you got need of food and shelter and all these things. See, we got purpose down here. And see, when we cry out to God, we want to cry out, Hey, Lord, I want this to be done for Ricky. I want Ricky's will to be done here, down here today, Lord. Wrong. I want to cry out to God with a humble spirit. Put that pride aside, Lord. I want your will to be done here today, God. Lord, I want to do what you want me to do, Lord. You might want me to minister to somebody. You might want me to talk to somebody. You might want me to help somebody in the name of Jesus, in the, in the Son's name, the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. Amen. You might want me to do something. I want your will to be done down here. And see, when you do his will, other things get done. Amen. I'll give you an example. The other day, I, I had prepared to come over here and bush hog the church bottom down there. Boy, I was ready to go. I like doing some of that stuff anyway. So I was excited about going, you know, and I got up, drove home from church Wednesday night. I was going to come over here. BR had some folks he wanted me to meet over here. And so, boy, I was excited about getting a tractor over here and doing a bush hog. Well, I drove home Wednesday night, and guess what? My brakes on my truck were gone. They started squeaking and hollering. I can't hear good. And I said, am I hearing something? Oh, yeah, Richard, I was hearing them. He was in the drum already. <laughs> And so 
<coughs> so I said, oh, I got problems. I can't pull that tractor with them brake shoes like that. And boy, I was all upset. I wanted, you know, I wanted my stuff ready to go, you know. And so I just cried out to God. I said, God, I'm, I'm going to do your work first. And then you'll help me with mine. Amen. That was the attitude I had. Thy will be done. So I come over here and boy, I tell you, BR, BR's been working all week, him and Thelma and some of them. And uh, BR had a man set up for me to meet. I had to spoke to meet and get the the uh, the uh, heat exchangers put in over there. You know, I met the guy and done that. Come in over here and the fire alarm guy was supposed to come in here and do that. He, we done that. We got some stuff done out there. And BR kept coming in and out with his job. We got batteries fixed and ready to go. We done a lot of work, didn't we, BR? And y'all was, you and Bonner and y'all was over here yesterday, I think. But what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, self wanted, hey, I'm going to get that truck fixed. I ain't going over and do that. Uh-uh, I didn't say that. I said, I'm going to do what God wants me to do first, and he'll handle the other. And guess what? Man, I went to this man that put my brake shoes on and my two ro new rotaries and all that stuff. Minimum charge. I was tickled to death. The man just blessed me. I'm just going to be honest with you. He blessed. You see what happened? God took care of mine because I took care of his first. Amen? Now, I'm going to be honest with you this morning. It was hard for me to come in this house. Well, it wasn't really hard because I love God and I, he's called me to preach and I know it and I love to do that. But it was hard because my wife's hurting. And I had to leave my wife this morning. I said, honey, I got to go and do what God's called me to do. And I'll be home as soon as I get it done. You know, God's got to be first in our life. I know my brother Roy and Jeanette, they was in Dominican Republic when his mama died. But he didn't pack his bags and come home because he knew his mother would want him to stay and minister that gospel. He knew that. Amen. Bill Posey's mama died over there one time when we was over there. And after he got through preaching the word, then he got on a plane and left. Sometimes it's hard, but you've got to press on with the Lord. You know why? Because he'll take care of the other stuff. He will. And I believe he will. Amen. Thy will be done. Do what God's called you to do, and he'll take care of the rest, rest of the aspects of your life. But one of the key factors that you've got to do is you've got to pray. Man, you've got to pray or nothing's going to happen. I tell you right now, I've been praying all week for this service. I've been praying Wednesday night. I've been praying for uh, Brother Richard and him, the praise and worship. I've been praying for the uh, minister. And, uh, uh, Richard ministered on Wednesday night that God would move. I've been praying. You've got to pray and, and turn down strongholds and prepare the way to come in to do, do, do God's work. You've got to call it down from heaven. Amen. You've got to pray. It ain't going to just happen. You've got to pray. Let's look a little, a little bit here. Amen. Look here. Conformity. Uh, give us supplications. Lord, give us this day. What, what do we need this day? We need our daily bread, don't we? Look here. Give us uh, this day the necessities of our daily bread. Amen. Necessities. You, you, you need daily bread every day, don't you? You see how, how what's all in this prayer? There's some necessities in this prayer. What is it? Your daily bread. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. And, uh, and forgive us. You know, we might have done something wrong. We might have thought something wrong. We might have had road rage yesterday. Lord, forgive us. I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry that I thought this evil thought. I've done these things. Lord, forgive me, God. I'm sorry. Lindsay's uh, grinning back there. Did that happen to you, Lindsay? <laughs> I've been there, though. It's happened to me. But I say, God, forgive me and bless that person. Amen. You see what's in this prayer? This is an example of a prayer that we need to pray. Amen. To start your praying off. This is really a good example to start your praying off. Look here. Let's look a little further. And uh, forgive us. Our debts, Lord, forgive us those things that we've come uh, done in rebellious ways and come again. And as we forgive those, what is that right there now? If you want your prayers answered, you got to forgive. I'll tell you right now, I pray for people and pray for people. And then I'll, I'll never forget one time uh, uh, I was in the Dominican Republic and we were praying for this man and he wanted to baptize the Holy Ghost and he wanted some things. And me and uh, 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 Debbie... Mitchell's wife was praying and some other folks and it was late at night. We were praying and hollering, God baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Lord, help him, help him, help him, help him. And God spoke to me. You know what he said? Tell that man if he'll forgive those people that I'll touch him. 
And man, I started talking to that man. I said, you, you got some people you hate and you ain't forgiven. And you, I'm going to tell you, that's a big factor in your prayer life. If you want to answer prayer, you ain't going to get it if you've got unforgiveness in your heart. I'm just going to tell you like it is. If you've got unforgiveness in your heart, you ain't going to get your prayers answered. It's going to stop it. It's going to hit up there and bounce back. Sometimes it hits up there and it takes 21 days to get your answer. That's what happened to Daniel, ain't it? But I want to tell you, it's in the Lord's Prayer right here. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those debts against us, those things. Amen? you got to forgive. Get your prayers answered. you got to keep them channels open. Amen? And guess what? You might be okay for a day or two and all of a sudden you got road rage and you didn't ask God to forgive you for that or you forgive that person may spoke to you in your community, in your grocery store, or at your workplace. Lord, he, he kind of ticked me off. That made me mad. It's eating at your crawl. And it's a festering up in there. And what will happen if you don't forgive, it'll fester up and it'll cause bitterness. And, boy, you really have some major problems because the tormentors will come upon you. Boy, that's another message I could get into, but I ain't th this morning. I know uh, we're running out of time. Let, let, let's look a little bit further. <clears throat> you know, you know when I studied about prayer, man, I looked in my index. Man, they were just listing, listing, list about prayer and all the people's prayed and all the examples that we have. But we as Christians must pray as part of your uh, promises of packages. We pray to God and put a petition in, and God hears us. Amen. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. You know, forgiveness as we forgive, love and mercy our debtors. We spoke to have love and mercy for our debtors. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, and lead us, guide us, Lord. Lead us not in temptation. Guide us, Lord. Don't let us get in temptation in those areas in our lives. Guide us, Lord, not into, lead us, Lord, not into temptation. Uh, not into temptation. Protect us against temptation. That's another one. Protect us, Lord, against temptation. All of these elements is in this prayer. Can you imagine? All these things is in that one prayer. And so if you pray this and ask God to help you there, it's a good start, isn't it? A good example in your prayer life. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God. Let's look a little bit further right here. This is not in temptation. That's guiding us. Salvation. Here's salvation in this prayer because it's talked about, but deliver us. He is our deliverer, is he not? Isn't he our deliverer? He is our, so there's a salvation looking right there. And uh, deliver us from evil. And when we get delivered from evil, what happens? You become righteous before God. You become right standing before God because he delivered you. Amen. Man, that's exciting. This prayer's got some stuff in it, ain't it? Look here, let's go a little bit further right here. And for thine is the kingdom. That's faith, isn't it? You got to have faith. You know, God gives us a measure of faith, but you got to have some faith too. You better grab a hold of that faith. Your faith is your belief. I believe that the Son of God came upon this earth, and I believe he was deity, and he was God with Emmanuel, God with man. And I believe he died on the cross, and I believe he was put in a grave, and I believe he rose on the third day and sits at the right hand of the Father. Some of your faith you better have. Amen. And look here, and uh, thy kingdom come, and the power, as humility, he's all powerful. We've got to humble ourselves before the Lord. I tell you right now, there's people out there that has pride, and they don't want to really get down on their knees. They don't really want to humble themselves before the Lord. You better get rid of that pride, because God's got a way to knock you down real quick. I'm going to tell you. Look here. And reverence, uh, and the, it said the power and the glory. Now, the glory, I reverence God. He's almighty God. He can strike me down any time. But I reverence the Lord. I love God, and I want to give reverence to him. Amen? Because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, praise God. Let's go a little bit further right here. And uh, forever timelessness and amen. Affirm, so be it. All of this is in that prayer. Now, I could go on and on and on, but we're running out of time. I want to I want to look at it uh, uh, right here in the Bible one more time. Mark it down your Bible, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. After this manner, for you pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want to tell you. <coughs> Conditions of prayer in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. If you look there, you got to forgive. 
You've got to get that channel open. If you don't forgive, God said he won't forgive. That's pretty heavy. That's, that, I mean, that, that's what God said, not what I say. Amen. We look at that. And you look at Matthew 18, 18. Whatsoever you bind on earth, be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth, be loose in heaven. I'm trying to get a lot in here. Now, who do we address when we pray? I don't have time to go to it right now. But John 14, 13, we see when we pray, we're supposed to pray in the name of Ricky. Uh-uh. That's good. I'm just checking you out there. When you pray, you're supposed to pray in the name of Jesus. Because you have power and you have authority because he has paid all of the price. And it says in God's word, there it is. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Who is the Son? The Son is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. We pray, we pray. When you get through praying, you pray in the name of Jesus. I ain't got no authority. I got authority through him. Oh, he's given me that authority through him. Amen. And you got it too. You need to pray. And, and when you get on, on your knees and when you cry out to God, pray in the name of Jesus. Say something about that name. Amen. Praise God. That's an awesome thing. Look here. And what do you ask for? We looked at it in Luke 2 and 4. You can see, thy bread, give me my bread this day. Thy will be done. That's some of the things. You can look in that uh, example prayer we talked about, some of those things. And you got to keep the channels uh, clear to God in Luke uh, eleven four. Keep the channels clear. Forgive. You got somebody that's going on in your life or a loved one or something, forgive them and move on because you'll, you'll sleep good at night when you do that. I'm going to tell you, I got experience in this area. I know. Now, I would get into unbelief, fasting, and praying, but I ain't going to do it. I'm going to talk to the Lord about that fasting thing when I get up there. I don't like to fast because you can't eat, you know. We're not going to get into that. What I want you to see is uh, Luke uh, 22, 41, Jesus kneeled down. And he prayed. I'm going to ask something a little special this morning. And then we're going to have a special thing after this. We're going to, Sister Jeanette and her mama's going to give out the fruit uh, little basket. But I'm going to ask something special this, this morning. I want everybody to bow your head. I'm going to pray for the folks on the Internet. And uh, we'll just, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word, Lord, if, if you want this Jesus we we're talking about this morning and be able to have an open channel and pray to him and get answered prayers in your life, that's the promises that God has given us in his word, the word of God. Get that word of God and study. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, please pray this prayer with me. If you sincerely want it, pray it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for my sins, for I know I have sinned against you. I've rebelled against you, not mankind, but against you because I've done wrong things. God, please forgive me. And God is a God of mercy and grace, and he will forgive you if you sincerely mean that in your heart. The Word of God says uh, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He'll do that for you. If you'll do that right now, he will come in your heart. And I pray if he comes in your heart, you let him in your heart and be Lord of your life that you'll just notice us, contact us up in the upper right-hand corner of that uh, uh, website that you own and let us know that Jesus came into your heart. That's the most exciting thing for us. I want to hear that God's touching you because he loves you so much. He loves you so much. Just ask him to come in right now and you have that power of prayer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Every head bowed. Was this message for you to not raise your hand I mean, this morning? Raise your hand. Be honest. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah.